Hello friends and welcome to our channel Career Stock. I'm Sunil Sharma, a senior consultant based in the Netherlands. And friends, today I'm super excited because for the first time on YouTube, we are going to share a real and actual project manager case study as asked in Big Four Consulting Firm. And to help us, we have a Karabi Bharadwaj, a seasoned program and a product manager with over two decades of rich experience. We already did one session with her in the past with the title Top 10 Agile Project Manager Interview Question and Answer. So if you haven't seen that session yet, you can watch it after this session for sure. And the link is in the description box and under the pinned comment. Friends, before we start, a small request. If you find this session helpful, which I'm sure you will, please, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out our future sessions. All right, let's get started. Hello, Karabi. Thank you for being with us today. Karabi. Thank you so much, Sunil, for inviting me once again. Thank you. Great. So without wasting time, let's start the session. Can you share your screen? Sure, I will. Okay, friends. So by the time uh, she's sharing her screen, normally the company gives one or two hours to prepare the case study. And in that time frame, you have to understand the problem statement and you have to come up with a solution which you will present to the panel. They will ask question about it. Basically, they want to see your approach and thought process. Okay, so we'll do a kind of a role play over here and uh, I will be the part of the interview panel and uh, Karabi will be our candidate. So uh, can you share your uh, PPT? I can see phase two development and testing. I can see an access sheet right now. Yes, I can see this. Yeah, can you do just F5 full screen? Sure. Great. So <laughs> this is our case study, e-commerce strategy for hello all. <clears throat> so we have changed few minor things here and here just to avoid. Oh, I can see your notes now. Can you go to the other screen? Yes. Yes. Now I can see your screen. So this is the case study. Yes. Okay. So uh, if you are okay, shall we start? Yes, please. Sir. Okay. So friend, this is a, a case study. Uh, Take some time to absorb this case study. This looks pretty easy, but it's not. There are a lot of problem statement in this. So yeah, I'm a global retailer having a presence in uh, all these three companies and they want to uh, you know, virtualize its physical presence. They are losing a lot of competition. So yeah, they are big in size and they are from last 40 years into the industry. They are concerned about their team will not able to provide 24 by seven support as they are not used to that high tech environment. The customer want to see the project completed within the nine months. That's again a challenge. And how as a project manager, uh, you're going to pitch this particular uh, solution to the customer. Yeah, so that's the thing, especially in a pre-sales stage. So we have done a couple of sessions on project manager in the past. Uh, we are, you will get to know that how the project managers are also participating in a lot of biddings and creation of RFPs and all those things. So if you're not seeing those sessions, please go and watch them. You can find them in a project manager playlist. Okay, so that's a case study. Uh, now I will just zip Karabi and over to you. So what you thought about this and what how you are going to, you know, crafted your solution. Yeah. Karabi, sure. over to you. Thank you, Sunat. So uh, I think the last bulleted point which you have provided to me is kind of very important mm -hmm. because right now when I am going to pitch, I will not be donning the hat of a PM, but rather a pre-sales consultant, right? Okay. So it means that while presenting uh, our case, it means that mm -hmm. I'm actually positioning our product or our point of view in front of the customer. Mm -hmm. And we'll have to... Uh, provide them with an fair, unbiased recommendations of some of the tools, technologies, as well as provide them with how we do things here in our own organization. That should be a, a high level thought process when I'm receiving the case study for the first time. Mm -hmm. After which probably my uh, thought process would be what is what will be the high level deliverable expected from our, our end as a part of the product. Mm -hmm. And probably during that point in time, I will be uh, using Excel or a word uh, if, if that helps any candidate mm -hmm. so that I can draft the high level 
product components which are going to be the core features or the capabilities of that e-commerce product right yeah. because based on that capabilities or the features the customer is going to understand in fact i do not know if i should use the word understand probably they are trying to visualize what they have thought is coming out in the paper or not good enough right and since this is just in the pre sale stage it means that uh, we have had say two or three rounds of discussion with the customer and yeah. then only we have come into the state wherein we are we can provide them with a high level product cap or capability breakdown and then we are also going to take them through uh, our our assumptions our risks and uh, how we are going to do the costing that is how yeah. i would like to proceed so that is, is yeah. that okay yeah please go ahead. yeah thank you all right so the first thing is the executive summary we we understand that this customer say hello all they are doing the business since the last four decades and we understand that they have a loyal customer base and uh, right now because they are feeling the heat from the online competition they would like to virtualize their offline presence and as such they are asking if we can provide them with a realistic and a scalable solution so that they can launch their e-commerce online store our focus areas will be we are going to provide them what would be a minimum viable product for the initial launch i will uh, probably dive a bit deep into this concept of mvp then we are also going to provide them with a rollout plan at a high level we are going to show them how we are addressing their key challenges and then we are going to propose tools and technologies remember when we are saying it is we are going to propose it means that we are going to provide them with some recommendations the decision making will still be owned by the customer then we are also going to provide them with the standard delivery methodology capacity based on the how we are deriving the cost and then we are also going to take them through the usual standard risk management or based on the assumptions that we have uh, so far so good i'm proceeding on the next slide <clears throat> So the current situation, as we understand, that the customer has their uh, geographical presence in Africa, Germany, and USA. Now, as soon as any candidate, when they are getting a case study and they are seeing that uh, that this retailer is having multi-country present, the first thought which may come into the mind of the candidate is that whatever the product or solution which we are going to propose, probably a local language and a multi-currency option could be one of the feature this is just uh, i'm saying because when it, this case study was given to me the first song that the first thought that came to me is that hey this product may require a multi-currency multilingual support or a capability and then uh, the key challenge of course is that they do not have online presence but this cannot be called as a key challenge i think the challenge is they are losing their market share to the online competition right since they have their physical stores online so the lack of online presence is impacting their growth they are losing out to their competition in terms of sale and they are losing out their market share the other key challenge as has been narrated by the stakeholder or the sponsor of this project is that their team is probably not so much familiar in providing a 24 by 7 support services to the customer to, to their end users because they are not used to in in working in a high-tech environment so the ask for the IT vendor, whoever is pitching in for this particular project, is that they have to craft a strategy to launch the MVP. They have to design, develop, analyze, and deploy online presence for sales, returns, and integrate with their social media channels. Then there has to be a strategy to scale up. We have to create a virtual presence of the physical stores. Uh, and then we have to craft a change management strategy and how to execute that, right? So I think from this slide, it is coming up clear that first we have to provide a strategy of what we mean by the MVP. See, any product uh, which has the core capabilities to address 
the key challenges of the business which is shippable and which can be used by the end users can be termed as mvp right so whatever the product capabilities or features which we are going to define here in this pre sale stage that may undergo a revision in the subsequent discussion process at this stage whatever we have understood from the customer will will be going inside what we called an mvp but this is again subjective to the discussion and the final negotiation of the contract and when we say on the third point that we have to design a strategy to scale up it means that we have to provide recommendation to the customer how they can scale up their online presence by integrating different marketing and sales promotion uh, you know the channels as well as uh, the strategies here we are going to need support from their own sales and marketing team because remember we are pitching in this project as an it vendor right so we can provide them with our experience we can provide them recommendations of of choosing the right technology the right platform the right tools and uh, but the strategy for the sales and the marketing the promotional campaigns what is going to work for them is going to be best defined by the customer not by us what we can do is we we can integrate their strategy and incorporate the same in technically into the product the next slide is is our point of view how do we define or probably decompose their requirements such that we can come to an understanding of a schedule and from this schedule and from the decomposed requirements we can also come up with a high level cost structure for this particular project right so requirement one will be probably identifying a couple of stores we have to digitize their inventory we have to digitize their customer data we have to use uh, probably the rfid best tech usage to integrate their local store inventory now whatever the requirements which are being defined here remember they are based on certain assumptions so while we are pitching in we'll have to clearly call out some of the assumptions which we have visibility as on day to day and then number 2 as as i have actually portrayed here that we have to provide them with the recommendation of choosing uh, the cloud solution provider right and uh, probably choosing or identifying the api gateways we'll have to develop the high availability and the sre strategy and we'll have to analyze the need for private or a hybrid cloud now we are assuming the fact that the customer here doesn't have any tech capability in house right whatever tech capability which they have may not be sufficient enough to provide them with a uh, uh, you know deep information or deep knowledge in terms of deciding their cloud solution provider so as a consultant it is imperative for us to provide them with a wide array of recommendations pros and cons of a couple of cloud solution uh, cloud solutioning platform and let the customer decide right the third point will be of course selecting the e-commerce platform but this is kind of overlapping with point number 2 uh, requirement number 2 requirement number 4 will be we'll have to design the prototype we may use figma we may use anything else or any other tools as well we'll have to display the local inventory in the sense that we have to develop the product catalog we'll have to develop the product dimension the sku dimensions the quantity and and other stuffs regarding the product requirement 5 will obviously will be integration of the payment gateway the wallets the cards the net banks uh, there is something which i would like to call out as a consultant you see the choice of the cloud solution provider must need to factor in uh, a couple of uh, parameters say for example aws aws comes with its own payment gateway whereas if you go for big commerce big commerce gives you the flexibility of integrating any third party gateway right at the same time uh, if i understand that the client has geographic geographical presence in uh, usa south africa and uh, in germany it may mean and we are assuming that some of their end users will be using apple payment or apple pay gateway right so we'll have to choose the cloud solution provider or the cloud platform such that it may support that particular apple pay uh, the the payment method right 
and then the requirement number six is of course we'll have to identify what third party tools including the chatbots intelligent search and recommendation engines will be good some of the most important or leading cloud solution providers will have its own referral review product feedback uh, features incorporated with it so that needs to be clearly called out to the customer and then we'll have to design and deploy the analytics which is very very crucial in order to see how the product is doing in the marketplace and then of course we have to identify and implement the business process engine uh, that is going to be uh, leveraged by the team members of the customer uh, there could be other you know any candidate who is uh, who is answering to this particular case study and we who are doing this particular pov slide they can craft their pov in a different way there is nothing right and wrong this is something which has come to my mind hence i have uh, designed it in this fashion but okay. there could be a better way of defining this as well okay i have one question over here yes, can i please. ask yes please so uh... You mentioned you already mentioned about like okay when choosing a cloud service provider like what what your what was your thought process like now why is it important to design a UI UX for the MVP and when you talk about all this thing like why we should set up the API gateway early into the project so that was the question right right I'll I'll try to attempt and and answer this question right so first of all why UI UX um see as a non tech person like me i am a user and if i am one of the team member within the hello all enterprise i will be the one who is going to do the cataloging of the product i'll be the one who is going to maintain the storefront i'll be the one who is going to interact with the customer so it is very important for me to visualize how do i as a user interact with the system if i do not see something up front in front of me it means that at the later stages of the product development i may be coming up with my own set of feedback which may derail the entire project schedule hence if the it vendor focuses on the ui and the ux development first it not only helps them in coming up with the prototyping faster but also helps them keep the stakeholders engaged since the initial stages of the product development early feedback loop always helps no doubt about that with respect to your second question sunant uh, so why do we need to integrate the api gateways initially there are a couple of reasons which is coming up to my mind as of now while facing this interview number one is uh, again the early feedback loop right when we integrate the api gateways we can test certain mock uh, we can test certain uh, scenarios by implementing mock services that is going to help the development team as well as the testing team especially in the uat phase the other thing is if we can set up a highly robust um, error logging mechanism then it is better for us because in the later stages the testing and the issue resolution becomes much easier hence to set up the api gateways hence the reason to set up the api gateways in the initial stages is because we need to have an early feedback from the end users how the system interacts like when i when a customer purchases where is this shopping cart information coming from where is the payment getting stored how is the customer end user for hello all is interacting with the system what is an api what are the api calls that are being called for how many api calls are being used or probably is going to get used during the peak time these these are information and key information which the team members internal to the customer they need so that they can understand what they are getting into and also in terms of deriving the cost for the entire product it is important for us to implement some of the key apis by the api gateways so that we can provide the accurate cost to the customer for the entire product does that answer your question yeah thank you i think you have elaborated pretty well thank you please go ahead yeah all right so i will go to the next slide so as as i have stated that the core focus areas for the minimum viable product will obviously be basic online storefront product cataloging with search and filter functionality we have to implement a secure checkout process we have to 
implement the customer account management uh, so that we can see whatever products we have uh, ordered. We can check out Karbi, our I think, history. Uh, sorry, Karbi, I think you forget to mention that seven and eight point. After six, we, we just came over here. Can you go to the previous? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, I'm sorry about that. If I've forgotten. Yeah, I said that we'll have to implement and uh, deploy the analytics, which is very crucial to measure not only the success of the product uh, when it is launched, but also to measure how the end users or how the market is, is reacting to this product, right? Say, for example, the daily active users, the monthly active users, they are all important KPIs that is going to come up from the analytics. But most importantly, for the stakeholder who has actually invested his money in virtualization of this physical store, it is important for him to understand how much money he's making when he has actually come online from the physical world, right? So uh, without the, that data, how much money he's making from all the storefronts, from all the geographical regions, across all the product lines, uh, analytics is this going to help him. So we have to implement and design that. And then of course we have to identify and implement the business process engine, as I said. This is more uh, required by the team members who are going to implement or who are going to interact with the system day in and day out for the customer. Uh, does that sound okay, uh, Sunna? Do you have any question? Okay. All right. So uh, while we are uh, focusing what would be the core capabilities or functional areas of the MVP, uh, basic online storefront, product catalog, securing the checkout process, customer account management, mobile friendly design, warehousing feature, shipping and returns, integration with social media platforms, SEO friendly, secure and scalable design architecture, there could be other focus areas which can be uh, defined by the candidate during the interview, but these are something which has just come to me as of now uh, during the session. And we also have to keep in mind that we are launching this uh, entire product for USA followed by Germany and Africa, and we are assuming that in USA they are having the highest online shopping presentation uh, penetration. Right now, I have uh, come up with. Uh, very high level product features or capabilities using an Excel. So I may uh, just see how is this functioning and if I can show this thing online. <clears throat> All right. So this particular Excel is nothing, but this is just to show the interviewer that the candidate is thinking through uh, the products core capabilities or core features, and will be able to convince the customer that they understand what an e-commerce business or an e-commerce portal they usually look like, right? And this cannot be taken as the final set of deliverable because this is still in the pre-sale stage. So the in-scope items are all reflected in column C, out of scope is column D, uh, the assumptions in column E, risks in column F and G in uh, and dependencies in column G. There can be a better way of representing the core capabilities. Again, I'm reiterating, this is just for the interview purpose, right? Within that one, one and a half hour, which has been allocated to the candidate, uh, this is the best which I could do, but uh, maybe the viewers in, of your channel may do better. Uh, so first of all, uh, you know, selecting the cloud service provider, um, we have a few leading cloud service providers like Amazon, like BigCommerce, like Oracle, uh, we have Adobe Commerce platform. So as a consultant, we can only provide with the recommendations, right? And while we provide with the recommendations, I think the first factor that is going to come to mind is what features or what capabilities or what are the unique features and capabilities across each of the platforms. And the second will, of course, be the cost. And the third most important thing, since we are donning the hat of a consultant, we need to be mindful the available skill sets which we have in-house. If the in-house available skill set um, is, is more, uh, you know, pivoted towards Amazon AWS platform, then probably we can highlight this. If the availability of the skill sets is more towards Adobe Commerce Cloud, then we can highlight that. So the availability of the skill set coupled with the cost uh, is something with 
which the uh, the consultant keep in need to keep in mind while taking this discussion forward and then of course you know the localization of the entire product local language support and one of the most important thing nowadays uh, which i find personally um, is going to be very interesting uh, is to implement the accessibility option in the product right when we are say, saying that accessibility it means that we have to launch the product such that uh, especially able to people who are probably you know having some challenges with respect to hearing with respect to seeing uh, vision they can also use even if they cannot use the full product but at least they can use some of the core capabilities of the product so we'll have to be mindful about that and this this can be a unique differentiator for the customer as well then we have to implement the currency converter and uh, we have to be mindful that the customer may run local promotional offers from time to time. Then we go to the configuration of the warehousing management module purchase. As we understand, it can be a centralized one. And then we have to re we have the return management process. This will also be need to be a centralized one because of the stock reconciliation option. And of course, the shipping. The shipping is, is going to be from the warehouse. We are assuming a lot of things here, but I think the most critical part of assumption is that we have to tell customer that we are assuming they have this warehouses this logistic supply chain available that that is something which is there either in their thought process or it is already available physical right so we'll have to talk to the customer and understand what is their warehousing process how does it work as of now and uh, then we go on to configure the vendor portal. But here you will notice that I have highlighted the vendor portal here as a phase two and marked it as yellow. This is something which we may need to understand from the customer if they would like to have the vendor portal as a part of the MVP because from the consultant's uh, mindset, we feel that it can be taken up in the phase two. Right. What will be the components of vendor portal is something which is reflected here in column E. Say, for example, the vendor can log in, they can check real time their inventory, the invoices, they can replenish the stock on their own without the store personnel having to reorder manually or the warehouse personnel. Right. And there can be also vendors. Um, who are actually the fulfillment centers. Right. So they can be the last mile uh, shippers. Of the, of the product and services. So we since the schedule is kind of very uh, aggressive that within nine months we have to come, uh, we have to develop and launch this product. Uh, we may need to configure or think of configuring this vendor portal in the phase two. And then we have uh, this product management. By that, we mean the catalog creation, the SQ and its dimension creation, and et cetera, like the product categories, subcategories, review, recommendation, rating, everything right and here we are highlighting one risk that the digitization of the inventory that effort can be taken up by the third party of course as a it vendor we can recommend them which third party would be best and why we are saying though it's because in the in the online uh, i mean all the online stores if they cannot uh, show the products in a particular way, you know, the sale may not be uh, may not be kickstarted even, right? So by that we mean that the photography, the picture, the entire appeal of the store needs to be done in a particular way. And in order to do so, uh, pictures they 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 come critical in in the order of priority. Now the IT vendor may not have the bandwidth or the resources or the skill sets to click all the pictures and then you know catalog them so we may need to leverage on the expertise of the third party uh, in fact the customer can also provide the pictures of their own products and uh, you know we can also showcase them but it is better that we leverage the expertise of a third party and uh, then we have to configure the customer portal like the registration and also we may provide them that uh, with the option that the customer can purchase even without the registration right we can also configure the profile and the transaction history of the customer then we go to the order management which will also come under the customer portal to track the 
order their refunds, their returns, and the history. We can implement the cognitive search. By that, we mean the intelligent search, AI-driven. We have to implement a recommendation engine as well, right? So it is a configurable component in some of the e-commerce platforms. Say, for example, the big commerce and AWS uh, recommendation engine comes as a part of its own feature. Uh, Hyper-personalized product recommendation, historical purchase, by seeing the historical purchase pattern, demography, um, and then we can also recommend new launched product. Phase two, I have just kept as a refer and earn. This is a part of the sales and promotional campaign. So this may be kept in the phase two, but we'll have to discuss with the customer. Mobile app here, I have uh, made this as a question mark because it's a pre-sales discussion. We may need to ask the customer, do they want to launch the mobile app in parallel with the web store? Right. Of course, the integration of the shopping cart, the ad, edit, wish list, and deletion of the uh, items in the cart. Then we have the uh, module or the capability of integrating various payments, net banking, card, wallets, and of course the analytics, uh, Sunant, which you were asking me to highlight a bit. Intelligent analytics like demand forecasting, inventory reporting, product sales performance, seasonal trend and loyalty, program sales and store discounts, returns analysis, fraud and dispute analysis. And there can be so much. There can be so much. But in analytics, while any candidate is trying to kind of dive deep as to what kind of analytics will be better, uh, see analytics as per my knowledge can be categorized under two broad categories. One is the product analytics. How much has been the download of the product? What has been the active, how, how many users or active users are there in the product? So these will be a part of the product analytics. And then there is a part of the business analytics or the sales analytics, right? That is forecasting their demand or that it is forecasting their sales. <clears throat> And that is also providing them with a trend of the various products and how their loyalty programs are running and so on and so forth. <clears throat> uh, security considerations also needs to be made both for the platform, for the network, encryption, uh, having a key vault to store your passwords, and then of course the authentication and authorization. And we'll have to also configure the roles and its access because, and this is more important for the team members within the customer who are, who will be maintaining and managing the products and the stores. And of course, we'll have to have a CRM so that we can provide them with a <coughs> help desk. Now, one of the key challenges that has been shared by the customer is that their own team members, they are not too much savvy with the high-tech environment and they are not fully okay as of now to provide a 24 by 7 customer support so in that case our proposition would be to have a faq section first so that the end users can troubleshoot their basic problems from the faq section and then we can provide a mail facility we can provide uh, probably a toll-free help desk facility that can run for a particular duration of each day except probably Sunday or Monday, whenever the weekend is. And above all, we can provide them with an intelligent chat facility. And after that, probably there is going to be a 24 by seven support facility. So this, these are thought in stages, not everything needs to be implemented all at once as a part of the MVP because it is not possible because the adoption of the product is very important for the end users of this enterprise. But more than that, the adoption of the product is important for the team members, the internal team members of this enterprise, right? Hence, uh, everything may not be a part of the MVP. We'll have to prioritize that. Now, these are the broad level or the high level key features, which uh, we have thought as a part of the MVP would be okay. I have one uh, question. Yeah. Sure. So I'm asking this question uh, as an audience who is watching this video. Is it possible to create all this in two hours or one hours? What is your take? Like how maybe like you are so experienced, you already worked in some similar kind of projects in the past. Uh, but is it doable? Or do you think like this much kind of details is required or how you have done it? Right. So Sunant, the Excel sheet, which I have actually shown you, I myself had done it. I have just for this particular session, I have just edited in the sense that made some of More the headers present. in bold. 
other than that i had done it within this one and a half hours time which was provided to me okay. right at the same time your question is very valid and realistic sunan right because although bpm we come from vertical agnostic platforms right since i have had an experience of working in such an environment i could come up with this entire product structure but it may not be correct for any other pm who has probably who do, do not have that kind of experience that who has not worked in this kind of environment before so what should and be our focus so, so the idea is like what should be our focus like you have talked about a lot of uh, technical details in the solving part Uh, so what should be a focus let's say if i have just only one hour or two hours if i have let's say one or two days then probably the things will be different and i have a lot of time to do this and that but within a one hour two hours uh, what do you think what do you su suggest that we should be focus on let's say one or two three key, key areas i think the most important thing for the candidate would be thinking himself or herself as the user of the product Mm, I think just that. It. and think of a particular product either they can think of amazon or they can think of walmart or they can think of any other product so identify one product and put yourself in the shoes of the user then it is easier for you to define the high level product capabilities i think you yeah Give the answer. Yeah. Sorry, I just interrupted you in between. No, but then... it's okay. This this discussion needs. So to... for you, for you, it's it's pretty easy. You are just explaining, and I was just like, I don't have anything to ask. She's just explaining everything. What should I ask her, right? But then it's not the case for a lot of other people, right, Karavi? So that's what. Okay, please go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, and also Sunan, just to continue with your thought, I'm reiterating the fact that these are all my thought process. But the viewers of your channel, they are, in fact, I am also an ardent viewer of your channel. They are experienced and they are learned enough. They may have a better way of representing this, right? Of course. So course. everyone is unique. Yes. Yes. In fact, and, I have few inputs on that, but uh, we'll we'll share it later or not. Sure. Sure. Then we come to the key challenges and mitigation, as we understand that the customer retention is one of the key challenge for that enterprise. Customer support is one of the key challenge for the enterprise, and in general, team adaptation will be definitely a key challenge because transitioning from a non-tech environment to a high-tech environment is a huge. uh what you can say it's it's a huge turn of machinery it cannot happen all at one go it is going to be gradual <clears throat> these are the delivery methodology and the engagement model which we can propose of uh this will be definitely time and material and uh, duration as the customer stated that this is going to be a nine months duration or scheduled project pricing model i will i will talk about this pricing model a bit later and the support will be again amc ticket based and the you know sa day trip now when we say time and material at the same time we say it's agile delivery at the same time we'll say that the customer has an aggressive schedules in 9 months these things are kind of interconnected right uh many a times i have come across uh, my peers my uh, colleagues you know who says that if it is agile it means that the scope will always be slipping that that's one thought process and the second is when you are saying it's time and material it means that okay fine this particular time has elapsed you are invoicing me but i may not get the end product just because there has been a slippage in terms of scope in terms of change request or whatever right so there can be concerns from the customers as well at the same time most of the it companies especially the big four sunan which you have just highlighted while you gave me the case study and other it companies they are focusing more on more on the capacity based agile delivery methodology or engagement model By sorry that, so yeah. so just just a small thing over here so yes uh, most of these service based companies are having this time and material thing nowadays but 
slowly slowly what's happening that they are moving towards this output and outcome based contracting where they calculate the cost of spend and then they are using the function points and things like that just an update nothing like yeah majority is still like 80 percent 90 percent but then as we are progressing right uh, they are going to adapt new new different models on pricing part on a project management part because sometimes it's very challenging you know from the board from the client perspective and from uh, the service provider perspective, the vendor perspective, that how to materialize one time we are telling that, okay, we, we have to be um, for the agile way of working. And then on top of it, we are still having the traditional way of working. Yes. There is no harm in that, but then things are changing. So even myself is working on a few contracts which are specialized in that format, but then yes, it's kind of in an early stage, but then few people are adopting. So just a small input, nothing else. Yes, Sorry. yes. No, no, right. it is it is very important that both of us share what our experiences are, right? Working through various customers and working in the pre-sales stage. So what usually happens is in the pre-sales stage, we usually provide a rough order of, of magnitude of the costing, which, uh, which is going to be factored in by the customer while they are allocating their budget for the IT, right? And the product development cost is again based primarily on uh, what is the schedule, how many team members we will meet, what are their roles or the skill sets. And if you are working in a multi geography uh, culture wherein you are having to engage uh, expertise from all across the world globally, then probably the rate of the skill sets across the geographical spread will differ from country to country. So based on that, and based on the decomposed capability, the functionalities, what we have just seen in the Excel, we can come up with a high level costing structure for this entire product, as it is been shown on screen. This is how we usually do it. But again, uh, people may have a different opinion. They can come up with costing structure based on their, uh, based on their experiences based on what is prevalent within their organization. So the roles here, which we have considered is the architect for the cloud infrastructure, security, and the system. It doesn't mean that these architects need to be engaged full-time. They, they may or may not be FTE. Their expertise may not be required full-time for, for this entire nine month, right? Maybe then, initially, yeah. Yes. Later on, yeah. That's right. So maybe initially the engagements will be higher and later on, you know, it is going to meander. And then we have the front end developers. We have the back end developers. We have the QA. Again, in the QA, you know, we can highlight how much automation we can do and where are the automation components are going to kick in for the customer, which is going to help. PM, the product manager and the PGM is the project manager. Now, the product manager may be engaged full-time, FTE, but the project manager, usually I have seen, is factored in 25, 20 to 25% of their time, of the entire role's time. So, for example, if minus the project manager, if the entire hour comes to around 2,000, probably 25% of 2,000 will be the uh, project manager's time allocated for this project, right? But then you can always negotiate internally and, and come up. And the rates are again reflected here. So the total number of hours you can calculate and the total number, the total budget for each of the resources are calculated here in the last column. And the total budget for this entire project has been given in the last row, as you can see, it's, it's a 423050 USD, right? This is done in the USD, but you can calculate in any other currency as you require. Um, Sunant, you have any question or comments? Maybe you can share your experience a bit. So uh, I have jotted down a few questions for you, but then I think we'll ask uh, once this is over. Uh, otherwise, I will keep on interrupting you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, please go ahead. Okay. And uh, this is the basis of the delivery uh, schedule. Based on that, only the costing model has been developed. So, and this is again, as I said, this was done in the, while I was in the interview mode at a high level. So planning and design will be maybe uh, taking up 
in the initial one to three months and then we have the development and testing from the fourth to sixth month and then the deployment optimization from the seventh month to ninth month onwards and uh, these are some of the core or the key features which i have highlighted that what we may need to do in the first three months in the next six months and in the next nine months right And the last slides talks about the assumptions and the risks, the impact and its mitigation. Now, here I would like to call out that I have seen many a uh, peer or many a uh, uh, colleague of mine, while they write the risk, they usually write in a, in a language that do not begin with delay in, lack of, resistance to. These are all negative words, right? These are not so positive words, but risk, when we are writing the words uh, or we are, when we are writing risks in a risk register, we should always write, say, for example, delay in decision making and should not write decision making as the risk, right? So delay in decision making can be a risk. Decision making is not a risk. Or say, for example, required skill set. This is not a risk, but lack of required skill set is a risk, right? MVP scope or too many changes, this is not a risk, but fluidity in the MVP scope or too many changes is a risk. So while we are writing the, in the risk register, we need to be conscious of how we are expressing ourselves. That's just one of my experience, which I'm sharing. And then again, the impact, obviously the most standard impact will be the schedule and in the cost, and they are going to get overrun. If there are too many scope changes and there's a delay in signing the contract. There's a delay in decision making. So uh, one of the questions that I was asked is, what happens when there is a delay in decision making? How will you mitigate that? At that point in time, my answer was, we need to time box the decision making time frame, right? Like we are time boxing the sprint, we can also time box the decision making time frame because beyond that, the cost and the schedule will definitely be overrun. <clears throat> For example, the, uh, this particular point, aggressive product pricing and promotion and global competition, which is going to be a risk because the customer is launching their product afresh. This is for the first time they are launching this online store, right? And if they are feeling the heat from their competitors already who are doing business online for so many years, obviously there is going to be an impact on the net promoter score because in no way they can match to the aggressive pricing which is being given by the uh, by their competition that is going to impact their sales that is going to also impact their confidence so what could be a mitigation that mitigation cannot be provided by the tech company by the it company but what we can recommend is a regulated reaction to the market just because my competition has slashed down the prices it doesn't mean that i'm going to do so so watch learn and then react or act and then a change in the leadership mindset is also required that we are not going to show any knee-jerk reaction. Yes, our NPS will be impacted. We are factoring that risk. We understand that risk, right? And this also means that the enterprise need to enhance or increase their people collaboration. It doesn't mean the collaboration within their team, but collaboration within their loyal customer base right? They have to keep a focus on their physical business as well, so that during this downtime when their online store is just up and running, they are not getting enough ROI, they understand that, but they are doing okay with their physical business, right? So these are some of the assumptions, risks, and mitigation, and probably, yeah. Sunan, this is my last slide. Okay, no problem. You can unshare your screen. Now I have few things for you <clears throat> first of all it's really awesome <laughs> okay the way you explain it, it's pretty good so i have very small few you are already explained everything so i don't have to ask anything but still so uh you mentioned about teams over here right so what are the few key challenges uh, which you may occur when you are going to work with the cross functional teams right so Sunand, in fact, this was one of the questions which was asked to me. So thank you for asking this, you know. Um, one of the important or one of the key challenge or key behavior which I've noticed 
is that when we are working with cross functional teams they have various priorities on their own right and uh, since the pm has to work through a lot of conflicting priorities because he or she is working with cross functional teams it is important for the pm to provide a holistic integrative leadership so that the all team members they are having the shared common purpose or they are having the same vision of what they need to achieve as a team so conflicting priorities is one of the key challenges which i have experienced other than that probably cultural issues you know in our culture the way we speak english the way we talk the way our body language or intonation work may not be equal in some other geographies right so we need to be mindful of the cultural differences and cultural issues and uh, time zone issue so i think that is very common we have to the pm have to work through on the overlapping time zone so these are the three key issues which i have experienced okay great okay uh, so uh, all this is happening right but as a project manager or let's say for to help our audience can you tell us like what all are there in a rfp when we say okay request for proposal rfp even many people not even aware about the full form of rfp so that's why i mention it so what are the key component of an rfp sure sure so rfp is again as you said request for proposal it has three main categories so one the business objective the business requirement the that is a category the other category is uh, the contract criteria under the contract criteria they may provide technical criteria they may provide vendor selection criteria they may provide some other criteria which is related to the environment say regulatory criteria compliance criteria so on so forth right and the third category under an rfp is of course the commercial criteria right uh, what is going to be a part of the commercial consideration if or if not the it vendor that the enterprise is selecting should work with any other third party or not all the team members need to be their own fte's or not so these can be uh, a very important consideration in an rfp so rfp typically that i have seen has three main categories one is the business requirement the other is the contract criteria and the third is the commercial criteria okay yeah there are many but i think you have covered the most important good okay so let's move on so you also mentioned about that multilingual support thing over there right because the different countries are there so how does this multi level uh, multi language support and this regional pricing help this particular e-commerce uh, platform in order to be successful what right. do you think about right. that yeah uh, see the business is global right but the sales is local so in order to localize in order to um materialize your sales in the in that particular region if uh, the language can be changed into the regional language if the currency can be supported in the regional currency then a lot of the time the customer feels that they they feel they do not feel that uh, that yes i am having say for example the product is launched in german and we are using a us language and that is perfectly okay but it is always better to have a german language implemented because it helps the customer it gives a psychological safety net for the customer that they feel it's okay for me to go to the site and buy okay uh, yeah understood okay uh one small suggestion Uh, for our viewers as well, because see, you mentioned lot of assumptions, so it would be good like if you have one slide with whatever the assumptions uh, which you are going to make at the beginning of the uh, deck. Then you mention about the executive summary. After that, if you can just insert one slide only on assumption. Okay, these are the assumptions based on these are the numbers. So these are the assumptions because sometimes they just give you some vague thing. So you have to assume that okay, my team size is this big or this is my you know. so that's a small thing but 
I think that will going to help. No, okay. but this is important. It is it yeah. is important, Sunant. I missed that assumptions in my interview, but uh, without assumptions, I don't think we can in fact. Correct. So it's always good to the product. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's important to put all these assumptions at one place. Why I'm telling this because we have already not on a project management, but on a other thing we have done uh, other case studies. So that's an important component which I think. Uh, it should be there. So that's a small thing, nothing else. Yes. Okay, now let's talk about uh, the dashboards, the program dashboards. So uh, how we are going to represent all this, monitor, how you want to monitor, how you are going to share your progress of your complete project. So what are the different KPIs which you think are important to be part of that program dashboard? So if you can throw some light, that would be great. Sure. Now, while talking about the program dashboard, Sunant, as we all understand, each enterprise, they have their program dashboard already configured, right? So they are kind of very standard. Say, for example, what is the cost variance? What is the schedule variance, right? What is the resource utilization trend? These are some of the key matrices that usually come up as a part of the program dashboard. Now, specific for this particular project, we can also configure a few other key matrices. For example, the team velocity, for example, the burn downs, for example, um, I can say the cycle time, right? These can also be a part of the program dashboard. However, again, for a PM, I mean, the project manager, it is very important to have a control on the cost and the schedule, and of course, on the scope. Okay, so uh, Karabisi is still, I have a lot of questions, but considering the time, we are, I think, already our time limit, I think it's going to be a one hour session, looks like. So uh, I think you have covered most of the stuff, all of the stuff, I would not say most, but everything you have covered. But still, as you mentioned, right, the approach may be different from yes, all different yes. people. So just take this as a reference. Uh, create your own, you know, uh, the solutioning part. Maybe you can share with us. We love to share to to check your solutioning part whenever we have time. So I think uh, we are good Karabi, for this session. Of course, I'm eagerly waiting for our third session on project management uh, interviews. Again, there are a lot of demand, a lot of requests from viewers that, okay, let's have one more session with Karabi on a project management. So I'm eagerly waiting for that. So thank you, Karabi, for this. Uh, all knowledge sharing with us so thank you a lot and uh, friends if you uh, enjoyed this session i am enjoyed thoroughly uh, if you find it knowledgeable don't forget to hit like and subscribe and stay tuned for more until next time take care bye thank you everyone this is one sharma signing off thank you karabi thank you so much Sunil. and thanks to career talk thank you yeah.